Hey guys, this is E with Scrapbooking with me, and we're going to start a new project today, and this is going to be, the videos are probably either going to be long or it's going to be two videos, because this is something that has been much requested, and I have been putting it off, <laughs> and I need to go ahead and do it. So we're going to make a, an album, and it's going to be a chipboard cover, but it's not going to be any sewing involved, so we're going to make a journal, basically. I am going to be using our e-club kit for February, which is these beautiful papers. I've already cut some of them down. You've got an 8 by 8 pad in there. And then there's lots of other goodies, and we'll just pull those out when we get ready to use them. But the first, now you did not get chipboard in your, your kit, but I know this is just regular flimsy chipboard. It's about the thickness of maybe a cereal box so if you eat cereal or you have boxes then just grab a piece of that chipboard cut them down to six and a quarter by eight and three quarters that's the size that you need two pieces cut for now you need some cardstock that you you're going to cover your chipboard with now I just grabbed out two pieces of brown cardstock out of my stash they were 12 by 12 and I cut them down to nine and three quarters by seven and one quarter and I will try to put the measurements out here as I say them because I know some people say they can't really understand me because <laughs> I'm so southern but um, nine and three quarters by seven and one quarter is what you're going to cut that. Now, let me say this before we get started. You can make this album any size that you want. I have seen them made teeny tiny. I have seen them made huge. I have seen them made five by five, six by six. It doesn't matter. I just decided to make mine this size so that I wouldn't have to cut my papers down so much. But you can adjust your sizes. Once you see the uh, actual making of this you will be able to judge how you can cut yours down to the size that you want all right i'm going to take one of my pieces of chipboard a piece of my cardstock and i'm just choosing what side i want out and one side of this is a little bit textured and the other side smooth so i'm going to put the textured size out side out and you're just going to center it up like that now i have backed my camera out so that you'll be able to see this full process if i keep it close there are going to be things that you're not going to be able to see so i've backed it out a little bit okay once you get it centered about where you want it then you can see that you've got about a half an inch on all sides if i'm not mistaken yes half an inch all the way around that's why we cut this piece a little bit larger than this piece so I'm just going to take my chipboard now I'm going to use score tape because I know it grabs quick and I don't have to worry about my paper coming apart I don't have to worry about waiting on glue to dry so that's what I'm going to use but you can use wet glue it doesn't matter this is just my preference when I'm covering chipboard And we have score tape in the shop. If you want any, that link will be directly below. We have all sizes. This is the, uh, what is this? Is this the three quarter? Nope, this is the one half inch. Now when I put my chipboard on, or when I put my tape on my chipboard, I make sure that I burnish it down really well. And then we're going to take the backing off. Now along the edge where I, like my, my score tape is running this way, so along the edges I'm going to go in with some art glitter glue. I just want to make sure that all the little edges are caught in there. You can go over your score tape with art glitter glue too. That will give you just a tiny bit of wiggle room because I will tell you, score tape, there is no wiggle room in score tape. Once you put it down, <laughs> it's down all right I just ran a tiny little bead down through there and I dropped it on my desk so now I just hold it up until I look around it and see if I'm about where I need it doesn't have to be perfect this is just a cover so it doesn't have to be perfect 
just line it up as best you can and then I go ahead and burnish everything down with my bond folder now let's go ahead and cover the back side before we do anything else so we'll look at this grab our score tape And once again, run around it a little bit with my art glitter glue. And if you're using wet glue, just make sure you get all the way to the edges. And then once again, just kind of center it as best you can. All right, we have our two pieces of chipboard covered. Now we're going to take our score tool and you're going to go around the edges of this and you're just going to score right up at the edge of that chipboard. This is going to make your paper fold much easier and not crack. And you don't have to cover it with plain paper. You can cover it with whatever paper you have. If you want to make a decorative cover then that's fine too. Use up some of that 12 by 12 paper. You don't have to have the e-club kit to do this. You can do this out of any papers that you have. Now we're going to take our scissors and we're going to cut at the corner, but we're going to leave about an eighth of an inch. To pull my little bucket out here. And then I just cut at a little bit of a scoop in there. I don't cut straight across. Because I'm going to have as much of that chipboard covered at the corner as possible. You could always put book corners on and things like that. And I may put book corners on this. I don't know. Some parts of this video I will speed up. I know I had a couple of questions about why did you speed part of your video up. I'm, I know that everybody is busy. And I know you don't have an hour to watch my video. So I'm just trying to save a little bit of time, but still let you see what I'm doing. When I speed them up, it's usually just if I'm inking or if I'm doing something that's repetitive that I've done before. It won't be anything to where you need to see or I'm, I'm not talking when I speed it up, anything like that. So just letting you know that. And then I go around with my bone folder and I just hold that chipboard down and then I just turn that up a little bit like that. And it just helps that bend. Again, all you're doing is breaking down the fibers in this. You could force it to fold over, but sometimes when you do that, you have cracking. So it's better to work it a little bit at a time. All right, there we go. Again, I'm going to use my score tape to go down through here. And I am going to put it on my chipboard. Now, I use a little clear block most of the time when I am trimming this tape. I had someone the other day ask me what kind of tool that was that I was using. It's just a clear stamp block. You can use anything that will press down on it if you don't want to tear it by, your, by hand. Sometimes I tear it by hand and sometimes I grab that block. A lot of people cut it, but I don't like picking my scissors up and down that much. <laughs> so I don't cut it. And the good thing about tearing is if you want to tear it at an angle, you can. Just angle your block. Which I usually don't worry about that either. I just tear it off. Once again, we're just going to go around and burnish. Now let's pull the backing off. And 
and I did lap mine over a little bit so that's okay to do that it just right at the corners you'll see that it pulls up a little bit on the one that you lapped over that's not a biggie I just put it right back down and this stuff is so sticky that it uh, it usually sticks pretty well regardless Except right there I got a piece of chipboard in it didn't I There we go. Now you just bring this over and fold it down. And I go side to side and then top and bottom. Now when you start to fold this in, if you see this sticking out just a little bit, like a little point there, I just take my little tool and press that point in. You can take your fingernail and press it in. And that just makes for a better corner. Okay. All right, there is that one covered. And then we'll do this one. we have those covered now I am going to go ahead and cut a piece of the same brown cardstock for the inside you can cover it with any color that you want but to save my decorative paper I'm just going to put brown on it and then I may come back and put some other paper on it later but if I cover it with brown then I don't have to worry about anything else right now now the two pieces for the inside you're going to cut these at six by eight and a half and then you can put these down with art glitter glue, Fabri-Tac, PVA glue, whatever you would like. I think I'm just going to put mine down with art glitter glue. I'm just going to make sure that I get really close to the edge. And then just spread it around because this cardstock is nice and thick, so it's not going to show through. And then I just try to center it up pretty much. Again, there's no perfection here. And then use your bone folder or something heavy to press that down so that all that glue is distributed out evenly. None of that is going to come up, especially on the edges. You definitely want to do that. So there is that covered. We'll go ahead and do this one the same way. There we go, we've got that covered. Now I've got a couple of places there that with glue on them, but when that dries, I can take my little eraser and erase that off. Just wait till it dries. All right, so there is our cover and our back, our front cover and back cover. You can lay those aside and let those be drying. Now what you're gonna need a scoreboard or something equivalent to, and um, something to score with. Now, you're going to need one piece, and I'm, I'm just using a coordinating cardstock, coordinating with my paper, so that's what I'm using. It came out of my scraps, so good. I'm using up scraps. This is 4 inches by 10 inches, and what you're going to do is score every 1 inch. Now, I've already scored mine, but score every 1 inch. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So every 1 inch going to be a little accordion fold like that and then you're going to need a piece that is four inches by nine inches and again you're going to score at every one inch all the way down okay 
All right, got those. Now, when you fold these up, you want to make sure that you've got this one. It's, this end is going up. This end is going up. You've got this end going down, which is going to attach right there, and this one going up. The two on the end need to be facing up. Then the one in the middle where you join, it needs to be where it would, one's up and one's down where it'll interlock. Because we're going to glue these two pieces together. Each one of these mountains is going to represent a page. Okay? And this is not the um, hinged binding either. This is completely different. Alright, now what you're going to need is, now I went ahead and cut these and I'm, I'm making my journal larger. Like I said, make yours smaller if you want. These are cut, they're 12 inches, and then I cut them at eight and a half, I do believe. Let me look. Yes, so it, I left my 12 inch piece, and then I just cut it down to eight and a half. And I folded them in the middle. Folded them at six. So you end up with a six by eight and a half inch piece. Okay, you're going to need as many of those as you want your um, pages. Now, I'm going to have, let's see how many pages, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm going to have eight pages, so I needed eight of these. So, let's see if I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, where's my eighth one? I think my eighth one is right here. I didn't, I didn't go ahead and finish it because I was going to show it. So I've got a 12 inch piece and then this way it's eight and a half. So I'm going to put it on the 12 inch side and I'm going to score right down the middle at six. And then just go ahead and fold and burnish. Now I've got my Really, it's going to be more than eight pages, but it's eight complete pages is the way you count it. All right, now, this is what we're going to attach with, and it's going to be an accordion binding. So, since this is four inches, you need to cut a little slit in the middle of your pages at four inches. So, I have marked down from the top two, I do believe. Let's see. Make sure. So, I'm telling you right. Yes, down from the top two. And up from the bottom looks like two. All I did was basically I found my center and then I come back two inches and two inches. And it's good if you have a Tim Holtz ruler because you can find the center with the zero. Come back here to two, make a little mark, and then back here to two and make a mark. And that gives you a four inch little spine piece there. Okay. But just make sure that between your marks it's four inches. No more, just four. All right, I'm going to take my little pokey tool and my piece of foam, and I'm just going to go on the where you folded it under fold there, and where you made that mark, and just poke a little hole, top and bottom. Then you can use this as your template. Just lay these together, make sure that they're lined up good, and then. Poke your hole. Always use the one that you started out with as your template. Let's go ahead and do all of these the same way. Just make sure you got them lined up really well. And poke your hole. Finished with that foam. Now you can grab your little exacto knife, you can grab your scissors, whatever you want to cut these with. But it, I do better if I use an exacto knife, but you may not. You might do better with scissors. I don't know. Now, 
<laughs> I do this a little bit different than a lot of people. I put this back on my scoreboard because I know that th there's a groove right down the middle there that I can cut by and I don't have to use my ruler or take a chance of going off. So I put it back on my scoreboard and I use the groove and I'm going to start at that little opening right there where I punched and then I'm just putting my knife down in that groove. It's not going to hurt my scoreboard. I don't know about yours. I don't know what kind you've got, but I've done this on mine many times and it doesn't hurt it. And I'm cutting a little slit right there. Go back on my scoreboard. Start with that little hole and I go down. And you didn't have to punch this little hole if you didn't want to, but it's just easier to find the place that you want to stop if you have a hole there. But if you think you can stop without that hole there, you go for it. My, me, I would probably not. I would just keep on trucking. This um, paper is so thick and where I'm cutting is coming off in there. So every so often I'll have to stop and clean this out. Okay. And this also ensures you that you're getting right on that score line just in case you might have punched the hole a little off. If you did, you can always follow that score line if you put it back in like this because it's going to cut right on that six as long as you have it lined up right. One more. See that holds a little bit off but I can go right on that six inch line there and punch or cut my little hole. Okay, we have all of our pages with the little slits cut in them. It is time for us to glue this together. So let's go ahead and put our tape right here. And I'm going to use score tape again because I know it's nice and strong and I won't have to worry about it catching or my glue slipping. And I'm just going to use two pieces. Probably don't need to, but I am. Now, you're going to put these together. Remember, this one goes down, this one goes up. So you just need to lay them together and make sure that you get them as fitted as possible. So as nice and even as you possibly can. Just don't go over that score line because you still want that to fold up. So see, now we have that together. Just going to burnish it. And we are finished with that. I'm going to cut that little bit of glue off right there. Okay. Now we've got all of these lined up, ready to go. So what you're going to do now is you're going to take your pages and you're going to slide your page right down on that opening that you cut. Okay, it should slide down on just like that. Now, on a couple of the videos I watched, they glued these together. But on one, the girl didn't glue hers together, and I liked that look better. So, and you're just going to slide it down all the way to that fold. And then you're going to take your next page. And they may be a little tight, especially since my cardstock is kind of thick. But that's okay. As long as it slides down on there. And you can even everything up later. Right now we're just going to get our pages on. Yeah, my cardstock is really thick, so it's like it's fighting against me. So everywhere you have a mountain, you're going to slide a page on.
Okay, so you got your pages on. You have a little lip here on this side that's facing up and one in the back that's facing up. Just make sure all your pages, all these are pressed down on there well. Your pages are even as possible. Looks like I've got one that's a little off, so I'm just going to pull it one way or the other. So there we go. Now, don't worry too much right now if you've got a page that's a little bit uneven because I'm going to show you how we're going to tighten those up and even them up and make everything come out just right. So I'm not going to worry too much about that now. That is our binding right there. Isn't that pretty? I like that. And see, I like it better if it's not glued together. It gives it a little bit of expansion there. So I have gone ahead. The last thing that we did was we put the little pages on here. Put these little things through our pages. Now I've gone ahead and covered my pages just simply because all you have to do is just cover them. Uh, some of them I covered with this handmade paper because I knew I, would I wouldn't have enough paper of the Graphic 45 to do it all. And then some I covered with the Graphic 45. That I covered with the handmade paper, Graphic 45. I just kind of alternated through. And then I'll show you how I did these little things to cover up the tabs and to hold your page on. Because see, this page came off. <laughs> so we're going to put it back on here and I'll show you how to lock it in. So just slide that back up through there. Now I like to just kind of make sure that I'm getting them as even as possible. And I pull that up as far as it'll go. And then I'm going to put these on here. So I'm going to put this on the outside. And these are the scraps that I cut off of the 8x8 paper. You could do something else. You could do another piece of regular um, craft paper or something if you wanted and put bigger pockets. But I'm making these into pockets and I wanted to use these so that I wouldn't waste them. So what you're going to do is take your glue and you're going to put your glue on this little piece. And then just even this up from the top to the bottom. Push it up against that little piece there and fold it over. And then I kind of pull it up this way and fold it over until that catches pretty good. Like that. Just make sure that it's in there all the way. And it'll be tight in the beginning right now, but it'll loosen up once we get everything glued in. And then since I'm going to let these be pockets, I'm going to put my glue right down through here. And then up through here. That's what I was saying. You could put a larger piece of paper on here if you wanted and make these larger pockets. But I just felt like I wanted to use these little pieces. So I'm doing it this way. Now I kind of pull up on that as I push it together and I just make sure that my little edges are glued together as well as possible. Sometimes my cutting may be a little off and want to be a little taller than the other and that's okay. You can just trim it. But then I just make sure that is glued really well, especially down here on that little tab because that's what's going to hold your pages in. Okay. Then I close it over and just give it a good press. So that has got all of our pages locked in now. I just did that to all of them. And then we have, let me go back to this one and not pull that one open yet. And then we have little pockets in here that we can slide little tags or things in. You could slide, let me grab something. Let's just say you had a, some tags that you wanted to stick out a little bit. Go that way. Slide the little tags in like that. All the way down through there. Okay. So that has got your pages. Now the size of these, I think I told you. Um, if I didn't, I'll tell you again. I cut mine at five and a half by eight. So these are, I, I left it at eight and then I cut five and a half that way. And so that gives you a good mat on your page. 
These, this is some handmade paper that I got off of Amazon, and it's like almost like a material paper. I thought that would be good for writing, journaling. And so I put these on the ones that don't have the little tab, and then I put these on the ones that do have the tab so that I could use these in there and give it a little bit of color. Okay. So that is the way that looks. Now the first ones I had was undecided as to what I was going to do, so I put this in there, but that's fine. It's not a biggie. Now you can see our pages are nice and even. This is nice and flat, and so now it's time to put on our front cover. So I've got my front cover. This is what we covered yesterday. You're gonna this is just a little bit larger than your pages here. You can see they're just a tiny bit, maybe an eighth on either end. So you're just gonna center that up. And I kind of hold it this way because I like to look at it and see if I've got it about right. That looks about right. Right? And while I'm holding that nice and tight up against the edge of my pages, I'm going to go ahead and put my glue here. And I put a good amount of glue because this really needs to stick. Now, while you're pressing down on this, pull that over. Pull that piece over. This piece will probably be the one that fights you the most just simply because this is thicker. It's got chipboard in it. But it's not that hard to do. Then give it a good burnish. Good burnish that way. And that has got your front cover locked on. Look at the glue. See, I'm a heavy hand when it comes to glue. But all of this glue will wipe off when I use my little eraser on here. I've got a little eraser. As soon as that glue dries, I'll take my eraser and pull that off. But you don't have to put quite that much glue. Okay, so that is on. There's the front. Now, this is going to be my front cover. And I'm going to put that on just like that. You put this down before you put your front cover on so that you can cover up that end there. So we'll go ahead and put our glue on here. And then I just center it up as best I can. So that is your front cover done. Now we're going to flip it over and we're going to do this back cover. So this is our back cover and I am going to try to look down across this and I may have it slid a little bit lower but I'm trying to see this. So I'm going to try to look down across and make sure that I'm getting the front and the back covers even. Hold it up this way. That looks about right. So I'm going to press down on this while holding and put my glue. And don't put as much glue, Edith, as you did before because it'll go everywhere. Pull that over and press it down. Okay back cover is on. I didn't get all kinds of glue in there. And then we're going to put this on the back. And again, I'm just centering it up. Doesn't have to be perfect. There we go, we've got that. So there is our journal finished. 
and I just like the the feel of it I mean it's not it's tight but it's not too tight that's why I didn't want to glue these little pieces together I felt like that would make it too tight this way you've got lots of room to expand and put other things in here now I'm gonna put some um, corners on here some metal corners these are some that we have in the shop and I'm hoping I still remember how to put these on because I haven't put any on in a while there we go a little pliers here okay flip that over press it down and I'll just pull that over with my fingers and then take the pliers and just press it okay that looks good when that glue dries then that's gonna be nice and sturdy there all right and I'm using Fabri-Tac Somebody asked me the other day what was in this bottle. This is Fabri-Tac. I like using Fabri-Tac on metal and things like that. It sticks a lot better. Okay. Slide that all the way up on. Hold it nice and firm here. Then I flip it over so that I can press those down. And then just use your little pliers to press it down nice and tight up against the corner of that journal. That looks good. I would have liked to have had a different color to put on here, but that's okay. Now, you could go ahead and put them on this corner if you want, but I think that would look a little strange, so I'm not going to do that. But you could if you wanted to, since there's another corner there. I could have probably opened up another little batch of these, and I would have had some different colors, but I didn't want to buy another batch. I need to use up what I have. Okay. And press that on. Holding it tight up against that. Making sure that your corner's right in there. And press that down just pop my finger on that one there we go nice and firm now I got a little glue on that metal part there so I'm just gonna take my eraser and this is the erasers that we have in the store and they take off glue and ink and things like that but let it dry first before you do that. That had already dried. Okay, that took that off. If I wasn't so heavy handed in gluing, I wouldn't do that, but you know me. Okay. All right, there we go. Got our corners on. I like that. A little glue right here. Go ahead and pull that off. It just erases it. I love these little, <laughs> I love these things. I have used mine and used it, and when it gets all cruddy, I just cut that part off and keep using it. They last forever. Okay, so there is that. And now what I'm going to do is, this is some of the lace that came in the kits, but you can use any kind of lace that you have. I'm going to put a little strip of this down through here. I will do more decorating in this, but I'm not going to do all the decorating in the video because each person decorates a little bit different, so you can decorate yours how you would like. that is on and then this came in the kits as well so we're gonna put that right down through there like that I love all those flowers
Okay, there we go with that. Oh, I love that. Okay, and then we got a little pack of these shimmers in our kit. And we still have some of these in stock, I think. And I'm just going to put some of these in different areas around. I'm not going to particularly plan. I'm just going to drop some on different areas. And all of these are not hearts. I know some people thought they were just Valentine hearts. They're not. They're These are like little flat raised pearls. Um, let's see. Let's put another one up here. They have a little bit of dimension to them, but not a lot. Maybe one over here. A little light one. That's a lighter color pink. And let's see. I'm trying to see if there's another place. I'm going to put one right here. That is six, so we need to put one more because we need to do seven. Let's put one, let's see, we've got that going that way. Let's put one right over here. And the Fabri-Tac glue holds these, holds these really well. There we go. Maybe you can see that, hopefully. Yeah. All right, I think that's all that I'm going to do in the video. Like I said, the other decorating I'll do, but I mean, I'm going to do something here. I'm not sure what. I don't have any more of this paper except some Christmas, and I don't want to put that there. I'll probably cover that with something else and maybe put a pocket here. Uh, I'll probably put some pockets on some of these through here and make some tags for these. But I just thought it was a neat way to bind a journal. There's no stitching, no sewing, no thread, very little glue <laughs> other than gluing your pages and things down. So it's neat. I love it. Love, love, love it. I'll probably be making more of these in different sizes. So there you go. I'll put a, probably put a pocket on the back too. All right, guys, that is it for this video. Uh, sorry I didn't get a video up yesterday, but our internet went completely kaput. I don't know. It has rained around here a few days in a row, and every time we have rainstorm, anything like that, our internet goes out. Because our internet is actually on a line and not in the ground like a lot of people's are. We're still old school. <laughs> So when you're in the rural area and you have to depend on a wire going across the sky and it comes a rainstorm, then usually the internet blows. But um, I'll come back and show you some different things that I've done with this. We may even play a little bit more in it, but I want to see yours. You, like I said, make them smaller, make them larger, make them TN size, whatever you would want. But they're easy and quick. And look at that. I love how that looks on the outside of it. All right, we will talk to you guys later. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Bye-bye.